Hey there, it's your systems administrator, Jeff. I just want to cover a couple of things today about using technology here at the school. Most of you have probably heard most of this already, but just bear with me. We'll try to make this a little bit entertaining. First, I need someone to help me demonstrate all of this. Oh, I know. Let's get Ray. Yes, Ray's in for a big day. Let's check back in with him later. There are some important changes to student accounts this year that you should be aware of. Upperclassmen, please listen carefully as this is different from how we have handled student accounts in the past. First, you must turn in a completed student technology policy to your enrichment teacher to receive a username and password. Completed means with your signature and the signature of a parent or guardian. Everyone should have turned these sheets in by now. If you have not, get your sheet to your enrichment teacher today. Each student also has a unique password for their computer account. Please copy it down carefully from your enrichment teacher. The first time you log into any school computer, you'll be asked to change your password to something of your own choice. Passwords must be a minimum of six characters. You will need this password and your student account to log into any computer, so please choose something that you can remember easily. Starting later this year, you will only be able to log into one computer at a time with your account. You need to remember to log yourself out of desktops and shut down laptops so your account will be available to use on another computer when you need it. Make sure you do not share your username or password. If someone is using your account, you will not be able to log in until they have logged off. Also, please remember you are responsible for all activity conducted on your student account. This is another good reason not to share accounts. If you think someone else has access to your account, please let your teacher or Jeff know immediately. Let's check back in with Ray now. I don't think he paid enough attention to that last part. Hey, uh, Ray? I uh, forgot my password. Could you help me out? No problem. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah. We have a code 3 in the media center. <laughs> uh oh. Looks like Ray will have some explaining to do. We'll catch up with him in a bit. Here at Brazier, every student has a student folder on the server. This is where you'll store all your work that you create on the computers. Your teachers all have access to everyone's student folders so they can check your work digitally if needed. So please, don't store anything in your student folder that isn't school appropriate and that you wouldn't be comfortable with your teachers seeing. We also have a limited amount of storage capacity on our server, so please go through your student folder and clean out old files you no longer need. Again, please do not store non-school related items. Do not use your student folder to store music, movies, or games. In addition to taking up more space, Saving these files to the server may mean that you are breaking copyright laws and putting yourself and the school at risk for extremely expensive legal penalties. Please, if you have any questions about what you can store in your student folder, ask your teacher or Jeff. After all, you don't want to end up like Ray. Ray mentioned something about having a sore throat, so we'll catch up with him later. We have three full and one partial laptop carts here, and chances are a teacher might ask you to help move one to another classroom. Please keep the following in mind. 
Laptop carts need to have all the power cords plugged into the wall, all switches turned on, and all the laptops inside the cart plugged in for the batteries to charge. Please help your teacher by double checking to make sure these things have been done. Otherwise, the batteries will most likely not be charged for the next class. Please ask for help if you can't move a laptop cart by yourself or you need assistance in getting a cart on or off the elevator. Laptop carts can be very heavy. Please use caution when moving them through the halls and pay attention to avoid injuries or damages to the cart or the school walls. Unfortunately, Ray was too busy trying to talk with his friends to be careful. Hey, what's up? Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah. So, how about the Lakers? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Having a great day, I haven't seen you in a while, huh? Yeah! No! No! I'm sorry! As you probably already know, we don't usually block YouTube here at Brazier. YouTube can be a great research tool and is excellent for finding and sharing in-depth information quickly. However, YouTube can also easily cause you to waste precious time. Please follow these guidelines. YouTube is blocked for students before the first period and after the fourth period of each day. This is to prevent students from tying up computers in the media center and elsewhere just to watch the YouTube or other streaming media. If you need access before or after school, please ask Jeff. Your teachers set the policy for how YouTube can be used in their classes. You are expected to follow their rules. If YouTube or any other online resources become an issue, we may have to block them for the entire school. Please remember, all of the technology equipment provided at this school is intended for education, not entertainment. Don't fall into the bad habit of letting YouTube or other online resources distract you from your work. Ray wasn't quite paying attention to just how much time had passed while watching YouTube. What time is it? Where is everybody? No. Let me out. Why? No. Finally, please remember we use a web filter here 
as we are required to do so by state and federal laws. The web filter is our best defense against unwanted programs, viruses, spyware, and other online threats. Please let your teacher or Jeff know immediately if you get any unusual messages from the web filter. Occasionally, the web filter can block a web page that you need to do your schoolwork. If this happens, please either find Jeff or let your teacher know so the page can be unblocked for you. The web filter logs and records all online activity for each student. Attempts to bypass the web filter or repeated attempts to access blocked websites may result in disciplinary action. Ray found out the hard way that he shouldn't keep trying to get past the web filter. Something's wrong. 